you because he was about to miss the seminar. He was in Delhi and he had to book a nice flight to come specially for this dialogue. I'm very, very thankful to you. And I think we have had the long association. We fought many issues together. I still remember the day when we went to Dimapu and attended the camp. We visited two camps of NSEN, that is Kehoi and Hebron. The one is of NSEN IM and another one is of NSEN K. And I still remember the day, the night when we dined with the chief of uh, army staff of NSEN IM. <laughs> I can probably pronounce your that. Uh, and also I think we are given some token of love uh, by the representative of NSNK and we went there for the interest, for the interest of our state and we have been working for this for the last so many years and I remember in one of the meetings with the NSN representatives I reproduced one of the statements made by uh, Mr. Angami Jaffo Pijo I would know NNC, the leader of Naga National Council, he says, let me reproduce this. He says that, oh, let me try to speak in Nagmis. And I have learned this language from one of my girlfriends in Danube days. <laughs> <laughs> don't take it away, don't take it away. <laughs> Even my son is learning the uh, Naga girlfriend, don't take it away. <laughs> <laughs> he says that ura uvie ura ka mechulelo, which means roughly translated into our land is our heritage to non salutary surrender. I repeat, our land is our heritage to non salutary surrender. And this very statement of Naga Shiju. I think I, as a student of school, school student, not only as a school student, but also as a student of a college, and also accommodated down to students in PG, at the time of PG, I had that impression that our land is our heritage and non self is the surrender. I think, Madam, Sir, everybody in this hall would be. Have, have, have had this kind of, uh, of mind and also I think many of us will be having this kind of mind. However, with the coming of our edges, I think maturity sets in. With the setting of the maturity, we look at perception changes. Not only our perception changes, but also our perspective change. And in the process of this, in the process of changing of our minds, what happens is that we tend to look for the constitutional means to resolve an issue. Constitutional and peaceful means to resolve an issue. Any issue, whatever, the issue may be confronting the state, confronting the nation, or my own personal issue, or clan issue, or the community issue. We always now have started to look for the constitutional and peaceful means, the legal ways of resolution of the conflict. Rather than going for emotional, Resolution of our conflict. And this is the purpose, the very purpose of this today's seminar is this that to look for an alternative relational forum or an alternative resolution mechanism in which the sensory or issue of Takma Hajam, whatever, is resolved through peaceful and constitutional means. I have always been thinking. At the time of my research or after my research, that at one point of time we need to sit together. There may be some apprehensions, there may be some misgivings, there may be some uh, sort of doubt or doubtful mind that why should we be conducting this kind of seminar. But as a faculty, as a professor of political science, as a department of the political science, we have an impression or I have an impression that we need to come to and sit together, sit across the table in order to find a solution, in order to find a resolution to any of these issues. And that was the purpose that we wanted to convene this kind of seminar. Maybe in future also this will continue. Also, 
the issue of Chakma and Hajam has been there for the last 60 years, more than 50 years. Well, to, to be precise, uh, close to that of 60 years. A committee was constituted in 2007, known as Satam Sena Committee, which calls for finding out a permanent and acceptable, acceptable solution to the problem. Another committee was constituted in 2012, known as Co Committee. However, this committee could not do much to find out an amicable and acceptable solution to the issue. And I think we are giving an opportunity for all the stakeholders to stick together so that both natives and the Chakmas Navy, so that a resolution could be found, uh, uh, an alternative could be found in which we have a solution for the posterity, for the future of our state. Now let us come to my book. I have written a book known as From India to India, the Chakmas and Hajam of the Hajam to Parunachal Pradesh. And this is the fruit of more than a decade of my research on the Chakmas living in Arunachal, not only in Arunachal, but also in Assam, in Mani in, in Tripura and in Mizora. And because of my participation and involvement in all these activities, I was also part of the APSU Constituted Committee, or committee, and we had been to Delhi 2015 after the Supreme Court verdict and with a stage Dhanna Day and because of all this involvement and participation in all these activities in the midst of that I got a project by Indian Council of uh, Social Sciences Research I got amount of rupees 18 lakhs at that point of time I think it was the highest individual project in social sciences I think uh, project people are they, <laughs> they would be knowing better and uh, besides that project and from that project I got the chance to visit all the places, not only in Arunachal today, but also in entire Northeast India, where Chakma people are there. And apart from this project, why I got interested in this subject is the fact that the native communities, natives of Arunachal today, because of maybe because of the exposure of the more Chakma connect the Chakmas. I, let me be slightly frank in it here that well connected to international community, international maybe press. And because of this, in many of the cases, in many of the instances, the post communities are painted as, 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 as billions in a way. In many of the writings, you see that there have been so many violations of human rights in Arunachal Pradesh. Actually, this is not the case. So, I wanted to find out what actually is the situation at the ground level. Secondly, uh, many of the writings, the actual population of the Chakmas and Hajams in Arunachal today, there have been so many variations. Apsu has been putting sometimes 30,000, sometimes 60,000, sometimes over 1 lakh, sometimes 3 lakhs. And in many of the you know, writings, you will find 1 lakh, 2 lakhs, 3 lakhs. In recently, the president of Assam, Jatyatabadi, Chakra Parishad, he, he says, he speaks that there are around 5 to 6 lakh of Chakma population in Arunachal Pradesh. Actually, I intended to find out what is the actual population living in the, of the Chakmas and Hajams or other <coughs> outside, quote unquote, outsiders living in Arunachal Pradesh. Another point that I wanted to, to research on this particular specific topic is that there are many writings. Academic, so called academicians, you know, including, I will just specifically, I must quote here, Mr. Chunu Prasad. Chunu Prasad, which has been widely quoted at not only at the national level but also at the international level. He writes and directly quotes one paragraph here. He says that Angla Simpo JPM was kidnapped by Asu activists and murdered after taking money. I'm quoting this from that from this book. And this is a statement. A statement. Where is as per the police record? I have gone through the police record indicating that he was actually killed. We cannot say the murder. He was actually kill, killed. Maybe some bad in Chakma elements. Probably the Chakma from the 
from Tripura. And this kind of writings gave me the inspiration to write, do something authentic, and have an academic understanding of the world. Now, coming to the book, let me read out some of, the, some of my findings of the book. That is uh, more than 300 pages. I cannot tell everything here. And if I am to tell everything here, Moti would also be talking about my book. But we cannot tell you everything here because if you have to tell everything here, I will all be getting wealthy. You know, you won't buy books, so I can be getting wealthy. So I can't tell you everything here. I request also Moti not to tell everything to the audience. Uh, see, they, I think there is no place in Arunachal inhabited by Takma's way I have not visited. May it be Divan, may it be Ampen, Milanpur, Ratnapur, Golakpur, Vijay, Vijaypur, Sukhanala, Manukanala, Silongpaha, everything I remember. I have been to Tripura to understand the socio-economic, not only socio-economic conditions of the Chakmas, but also to understand the political status of the Chakma state. I still remember a place called Pentachal. I stayed with the Chakma family day. I had been to Mizoram, not only to Mizoram, Ajal, but also been to Demagiri, the place, I think many of the Chakmas have not gone there, the place where they migrated. I not only had been to Demagiri from Kamranagar, <laughs> through bike ride, you know, I still remember one Chakma friend, you know, who took me. I was still riding there. And I had been to Demagiri, not only been to Demagiri, but also I crossed over to Bangladesh. That took illegally. <laughs> I could have been arrested there. I wanted to see. They, across the border also you have Chakma people. I wanted to see the condition there. And the condition there is, you know, pathetic as compared to the conditions in India and in that of Arunachal Pradesh. I could make that sense. Now, let us come to this uh, population, uh, uh, the, uh, population of the Chakma. The census, as per the census of India report, there are 46,773 Chakmas in Arunachal. Census. And out of that, 7,152 Chakmas have been granted the right, the constitutional right to vote. And it was 1,497 in 2004 election. And out of total, 14, initially 14,888 Chakma had migrated from 1964 to 1969, maybe more after, in between this. Now, only 4,615, as for my R record, are alive today. And these 4,615 are the only one who are claiming citizenship. We tend to mistake, you know, we tend to make a mistake that we, uh, every Chakma is claiming citizenship. No, this is not the case. This is only those people who originally migrated from this Pakistan of Bangladesh, they are claiming citizenship. And rest say that they are the citizens of India being born in India as per Article 5 of the Constitution of India. There are many writings which say that there are three categories of migration <coughs> Chakmas in Arunachal Pradesh. First one is still Chakmas who are still migrating from Bangladesh. Second is the Chakmas who are migrating from Assam, from Tripura, also from Mizoram. And also third category of Chakmas who are still migrating Interstate migration, maybe from Divan to uh, Golapur, maybe to Holongi, this happens. But when I have visited the places there in the Chakma inherited areas, I could not find any of the Chakmas who are actually migrating now. And none of the police personnel, or even the officials, could give me the statistics that these are the people who are actually new migrants <coughs> Chakma people. Rather, I must tell you here, rather as far as, as, far as my research is concerned, because I have said, uh, visited many places, just I told you, many Chakmas are day in, from Arunachal day, day in Mizoram and Tripura. I want to get into the details of this, but I must tell you this. Another point of 
my finding is that they have been an integrity in the Supreme Court ruling of 2015. Honorable Supreme Court has specifically said that for the confirmation of citizenship to the genuine Takmas and Hajongs in Arunachal Pradesh. However, there lies a problem in the sense that how would we determine determination of the genuineness of the Chakma? How would I know? Or how does that government know that these are the genuine Chakma and these are not the genuine Chakma? This is one point. Another point the Supreme Court has made and set, uh, has stated in the ruling that since the Chakmas are already day within the territory of Arunachal Pradesh, therefore, there is no requirement of inner line permit. If this is the case, I have a feeling, not as a citizen, but also as an academician, or as a student of political science, if this happens, then the legal sensitivity of Bengal Islam Frontier Regulation 73 would, would, would go instantly. Sanctity would go instantly and it, it would have no use, no meaning attached to it. Another point that I just I have found out <laughs> is that and they, it has been unprecedented that the Chakmas were registered. I told you uh, 7,152 Chakmas have been registered so far as a voter, but they have been registered as I as an independent uh, scholar am to say, if I am to say. Has been, they have been granted the right to vote without fulfilling the requirements to be a voter. Now, if you look at Article 326 of the Constitution of India, which says that in order to be a voter, you have to be a citizen of India. And look at Section 16 of the Representation of People Act 1950. It says that you cannot be a voter unless you are a citizen of India. Therefore, they have been registered as voter without fulfilling the requirement of being a voter, without being a citizen of India. Important point that I have found out for the Chakmas form of the prince a day, I must tell them also this fact that taking advantage of the economic situation for the Chakma in these places, some Christian organizations are making inroads into the community in the name of social social and community services and some of Chakmas I think have converted to Christians. This trend I think needs to be looked into whether they are actually converting because of uh, so, uh, because of uh, this uh, they desire or is it because of some induce, kind of inducement is they you know, you have to find this out. <laughs> as far as the enforcement of the Chakmas are concerned yes there are some instances of enforcement, particularly in Divan area. Number one. Number two, the instances of such enforcement, but not as high as that we actually think. The instances of the enforcement by Chakmas in, as I said, Sukhanala, Madhukhanala, Silong Pahar, in the reserved area. Now, we have to understand why this enforcement is taking place. Enforcement to the reserved area, state forest, and also enforcement of the, of the native community. And this is happening basically because of two reasons. First reason being that because of shifting nature of cultivation of the Chakmas. I think this needs, this practice needs to be arrested. And Chakma community leaders, they could hear me, they really need to do something on this. Number one. Number two, encroachment on the reserve and state forest is happening basically because of now being river very close to their settlement areas and here inundation of the, the land takes place year, year after year and basically because of this they have been compelled to shift over to the reserve areas and they, if there is an encroachment it is for the state government to look into the matter and another important point must, I must tell the audience today is that you know, since I have visited uh, almost all the Chakma inhabited areas in Tripura and Mizoram and Assam and Arunachal Pradesh, I could proudly say that the Chakmas of Arunachal Pradesh are much better than the Chakmas in Tripura and Chakmas in Mizoram. Of Chakma, Bangladesh ka chori DJ. 
Socially, they are far more better. Economically, they are far more better. Politically, of course, they have as this status they economically they are power in Arunachal, this is because in Chakma, I have seen in the Chakmas of Mizoram and Tripura, I have closely observed only those who are representing in the autonomous council, the families, they are the one of people there. Others in general are Chakma, the Chakmas in Arunachal are much better in terms of economy. Socialists. I think much social relations in Arunachal Pradesh are much better than the Chakmas in Mizoram and Tripura. Because I'll, I'm sorry if you have any uh, Bengalis here or you have any uh, Mijos here. I must tell you one thing that in Mizoram, in order to call yourself a Mijo, I think you have to be a Christian. That's my assessment, personal assessment. Not touching hunting the sentiment of any community. Number one. Number two, in Tripura, to be a part of society, Tripuri society, you have to speak, you have to speak Bengali there. Unless you speak Bengali there, not only speak Bengali, you have to read Bengali schools. In spite of the fact that the Chakma inhabited areas, they in Tripura comes under the Tripura Tribal Council, but still then Bengali is in practice, not their own mother tongue. And in that case, in Arunachal Pradesh, there is none. We don't have any kind of conditions just to that. This needs to be taken into consideration. Now, two points I must tell you to the audience. Most importantly, if all the Chakmas, more than, would be close to like 50, 60,000 now, if all the Chakmas are granted constitutional right to vote, or which also would mean that they have the right to contest elections. That is, in an average look, to look at the average representatives in Arunachal, voters in Arunachal per constituency, then they would be around close to 10. 10 MLAs would have to be allotted to the Chakmas <coughs> if the trend continues in this, which would be more than the MLAs of Disney, Simpo, and Kampi putting together. And this would have serious political repercussion for the state, for our people, for the future of our country, and the future of our state and future of our posterity. That needs to be taken into consideration. Another point that we must remember is that scheduled tribe population of the state, in 1969 it was 89%, now it has come down to 58%. Maybe in the future it might come down once again. <coughs> These are the, um, some of the findings that is there in the book. You can have a look at the book, read the book. And I will not say buy the book, but <laughs> read the book. And that, that way you will be indirectly helping us also, the department also. Now there have been some uh, misgivings uh, that uh, why are we actually conducting this uh, seminar along with the release of the book. Uh, I would uh, make a straight statement here that there is no non academic consideration for the seminar to be conducted in this manner. Nothing non academic considerations have been here. Plus, there are some misgivings to the fact that uh, we have must have been funded by some of the organizations. Now, we did not, did not get any fund from outside RGU. Uh, Our is also very keen to uh, uh, grant some amount for this seminar, but we did not receive any amount, even a single penny from outside this university. This must be clear to you. Now, I've taken two minutes, so uh, let me conclude with this, that I have my writings, I have written so many articles on papers, I've written books, not only that, I have participated in the student movement against the Chakmas and not Chakma Tibetans and the refugees. In school time, I have taken baton of CRPF, still my jack is paining because of this. And my 20 years of teaching in political department, doing research, visiting different places in Arunachal Pradesh and elsewhere. In India, in fact, I have visited almost all places in India. All states, not places, all states in India. And I have, uh, in the state, my country is there. 
there are two potential conflict zones. And if these conflict zones are not handled properly, it may lead to extremism in one way or the other. This is my hunch. Not as a, just as an academician, but also as a citizen of the, of the country and the state that I have concern for this. The first one is that of corruption and corrupt practices in the public services community. Uh, sorry, commission. Corruption and corrupt practices in the public service commission. Youth aspirations youth of the youth are throttled in this way. And there is a possibility of the youth if not handled properly. If the commission does not function properly, there is a possibility that we might get into the way of extremism, which would not be good for the future of our state. Second one is this Satma Hajam issue. Not just Satma Hajam issue, the outsider versus insider issue. Issue of insiders, natives, and non natives issue. And this also has the potential to become a conflict job and which might lead to extremism in the future, which needs to be arrested at this point of time. Therefore, therefore, we have a feeling that these things need, need to be meet in the bud. And we also have representatives of uh, Arunachal Pradesh private strike forum. I think we need to discuss at the broader broader level. Uh, for this for solution to any of the conflicts, I think we don't have to be dependent on any other and anybody, particularly the political leaders, sorry, <laughs> uh, Kalingji, but and uh, Menaji, particularly the political leaders, political parties and the political leaders. They will say something and do something. We have to resolve our kind of issues within ourselves. That has to be it. Now look at the statement made by Honorable Minister Kiran Rejuju about relocation and almost the next day, not next day, four, three, four days after Chief Minister of Assam says that we didn't have any kind of, uh, kind, kind of uh, negotiation with the Chief uh, of Mr. Kiran Rejuju and this kind of statement keeps keep, keep, keep happening. We really need, need to take care of this. Hmm. I have a feeling I have a personal feeling, you know, the department's feeling. I have a feeling that relocation is the best possible solution to solve this kind of problem within the state, given the historical and legal protection given to our natural place. But, however, we have to know, we have to identify, we have to judge the practicality of the of relocation. Not only this, at the ground level, but also we have to understand the after effect of the relocation, whoever is here. Like, if relocation was to be there, for example, for the, of the Chakma, for example, who would replace them? Most probably, illegal Bangladeshi would come into their place. I think that would be more disastrous than that situation that we have today. <laughs> This needs to be taken into consideration when we talk about anything. Therefore, we need to have this kind of settings, we need to have this kind of negotiations, this kind of down the table discussions is necessary at this point of time. Lastly, if any solution package has to be there for the solution of the Chakma Hajam issue or the Tibetan issue, we also have to talk about the outside, the so-called outsiders, I'm sorry, the so-called outsiders who does not in, uh, enjoy a PST status here, like that of missings, some of the missings, not all missings, Morans, Motaks, <coughs> Karbis, Karbis we have in Bolongi, three, four places a day, the Karbis within our natural bodies, we have also have to talk about that. And also, there is one community around 121 families, the Bhutanese family in Divan. Many of you don't define this. We also have to talk about this. And resolution has to be inclusive, not exclusive. And this is for the state government, not only state government, all the stakeholders in Arunachal Pradesh, ANPF, students' organizations, for us, departments, for the university, and more importantly, the state government to take into consideration 
in order to have any kind of solution to any kind of conflict in the state. Thank you, thank you for the presence, and thank you for buying my book. <laughs>